Hey, good morning, everybody. This is Mr. Raider. Uh, this is Economics, a Quality of Life Lesson, scheduled for April 23rd uh, for the competition students or April 28th for everybody else. Uh, the purpose of today's lesson is to introduce the table of contents for the final Quality of Life Innovations proposal, review all of the different steps that you need to have in order to have a proposal that will meet the requirements of the competition. In addition, I will include uh, a sample from one of the students from last year so that you can see what the final proposal looks like from start to finish. So let's get started. Uh, the opening question is to have you kind of think through creating a title for the quality of life project. You don't want it to simply be the name of your quality of life issue. You do want to give it a name that is going to hook the reader and get their attention. Okay, so we're gonna to begin to format the proposals. You'll organize all your papers into the file that contains the field research and analysis paper with the appendices uh, completed in early March before we went remote. You're gonna have the next several days, either to May 4th or to May 11th to finish uh, formatting, revising, and editing your paper so that you can get the best grade possible for your hard work. Uh, if you are entering the competition, you will be encouraged to watch the final two webinars about the proposal submission. The first one has already been posted. Uh, so how do we organize the final proposal? So you want to follow each of the steps uh, below to organize your proposal. I also included on the next two pages sample table of contents. Uh, feel free to copy and paste the sample table of contents format you prefer onto page two of your proposal and then change the titles and sections depending on what your page numbers will be for your proposal. Key things to keep in mind. You must use 12 point Times New Roman font double spaced with one inch margins. Okay. The appendices can be single spaced where appropriate as they do not count towards the 15 page limit. So for example, if you start the summary paper on page three, the final conclusion paper cannot be beyond page 17, as that would exceed the 15 page limit. You'll create a title page. The title itself should be no larger than 16 font, and the footer should have page numbers that are clearly labeled. Uh, your title should be short, descriptive, and centered on the page with quality of life innovations proposal centered below it. You'll create a table of contents on page two. Uh, your summary paper will be page three. Make sure that you have a section header. Page four will be your background research paper that will then be pasted in. You can leave your field research analysis paper where it is as long as it is pasted in after the background paper. After the uh, research and analysis, you'll include the recommendation paper, then the implementation paper, and the financial implications paper. You wanna make sure that you have section headers for each paper. You'll have your conclusion paper and then the references from the background paper. Any references that you made in the field research or the recommendation, implementation, and financial implications, otherwise known as the RIFI paper, would be added to the section. You should have nine references in the section, including the citation for the expert. If you are entering the competition, that is mandatory. Okay, so you'll find any correspondence emails. If you have not put that into the appendix, you will do that. It can be the first thing after your uh, reference page as it was referenced in the background section and probably in the field research paper as well. Uh, the final proposal should be organized in this format. And you wanna make sure you remove your name and the name of our school from all parts of the paper, including the letters to experts you can either use black highlighting or stars, and I'll show you how to do that in the sample paper in a few minutes. Okay, so these are the two sample table of contents. This one refers to chapter numbers, each section of the proposal. So chapters one through seven is the proposal itself. Everything else are either appendices or references which do not count for the page limit. The sample table of contents on the right is the way that the Wise Foundation themselves put it in their final webinar, which I will bring up now. You're welcome to use either format as you may prefer. Okay, so let's go into how the Wise Foundation has us organizing these proposals. So it's the same thing. These are all of these sections of the proposal. This is a sample title page. Again, the title of the project, quality of life innovations, and when it was submitted. This is a sample table of contents. This is the same sample, but in numbers as opposed to Roman numerals. 
Uh, some reminders uh, for those of you that are entering the competition, ideally you should have it done by Monday, May 4th, okay? Uh, should be double spaced 12 point font. Uh, some final checkpoints, again, this is really important for everybody entering the competition, but even for those of you that are not entering the competition, I will be looking to see that you're doing these things. So you should have page numbers. The background paper should not be more than four pages. Uh, and your charts should have labels. It should be clear to me when I read the figure what it is that I'm looking at. And for those of you entering the competition, if you do have questions or comments or concerns, that is the name of uh, the Quality of Life Program Manager, Shauna Solajor, and her email and her phone number. Some things to keep in mind, again, the font has to be Times New Roman. For our purposes, 12-point double space. Okay, so let's take a look at this point now at a sample proposal from last year, and we can look at what it, uh, how it looks from start to finish. So the first thing you will do in your Google Doc is you will rename your document to the name of your proposal. When you want to put in a header, you go to the top of the page, just click, double click in, and it should allow you to then enter in what you want for your header. Okay, notice the title. It is size 14 font. It can go up to 16, should not be lower than 12. The date of the final submission was when they submitted it last year. Okay, so page two is the table of contents. You'll notice it's very similar to the ones that I showed you before. You have the information that is in the proposal itself. Again, notice page three to page 17. The student uh, satisfied the 15 page requirement. We can see all the appendices clearly labeled as well. So if we look at the paper itself, summary, notice only a paragraph. And again, this was a lesson that was posted a couple of days ago. Keep in mind, it only needs to be one or two paragraphs. The background paper follows. And again, you'll notice it is four pages in length. Research and analysis. You'll have the narrative section, right? Then you have your data analysis. Again, you combine the narrative section with the data analysis. You have your figures, again, clearly labeled in terms of what it is that you are trying to examine. Second figure, again, has a clear label. Same with the third. Uh, you'll notice the recommendation starts on the same page as the end of the research analysis. That is perfectly fine if you're trying to conserve space to meet the 15-page limit. You can combine the starting point. Please do not start the background paper on page 3 of the summary. That should be separate. So we have the recommendation. Notice the student hyperlinked their website and their petition. And again, the website and the petition this year will be optional, but they really will be mandatory for students entering the competition. Okay, clear implementation plan, very clear steps. And then the financial implications are short, and again, it can be shorter than this, but a short description of what it will be. And the information in terms of the table, and then your conclusion paper. And then that finishes the proposal. References start on this page here. And again, you notice everything from the background paper, the expert outreach, again, very clearly cited. Feel free to use this citation, just change the dates as needed. And let's start looking at the appendices. Okay, so there's a couple of ways you can do it. You can see that this student chose to do the black highlight. So I'm gonna take the black highlight off so that you can see what it looks like. So you go to highlight here, I'm gonna put none and you can see the school. So another way that you can do it is to go into the materials and you can say, okay, I'm gonna put in stars here. So I'm gonna press shift and the eight button that puts in stars. And that is another way to take out your personal information in this letter. And again, anything related to our school, your name or my name needs to be taken out of the proposal for the competition. And even for those of you that are not entering the competition, I still want you to make your final submissions anonymous by taking this information out. Okay. I'm going to scroll through the student's outreach. This was a chain of emails with a particular uh, expert. Okay, so then you'll have your survey with all of your questions and then your visuals. So again, you want to have the question, the table, and the chart. You should have labels on the chart to make it clear to the reader uh, what the data points are. All right, I'm going to scroll down through the rest of the survey questions to get to the next component of the student's project. 
Okay, so then you want to have your pivot tables clearly identified. You want to have a correlation done as well. Don't worry about standard deviation and margin of error. That was something that we did last year. This year, you looked at the New York City Population Fact Finder to find the margin of error for the broader uh, neighborhoods that you did your surveys in. Okay, so next we have some screenshots. So what I would recommend you do is have a screenshot for your homepage. And I would also recommend that you hyperlink the website here as well. So I would, I would highlight what I want, right click, click link, and then you can copy paste your information. So if I go to the student's website, copy and paste, and then you will see the hyperlink is now in the student's project. Okay. So this is still their website. They chose to include more. This is their petition. And then they also, as part of their financial implications, they created a GoFundMe page in order to implement their project ideas related to accessibility issues for disabled individuals. Uh, it may have, in my opinion, I think they made their goal a little too high. So they were able to fundraise $405 for their project, uh, but it was not ultimately implemented because they were unable to reach their goal. So that's just something to think about in terms of if you chose to go that route, uh, one way to go through the funding options. And then the last thing is a screenshot of a flyer that the student created for their project. All right, so that brings us to the end of today's uh, lesson. Please do reach out to me if you have any questions. And again, this is what the final proposal will look like from start to finish. This would be an example of a very competitive proposal that can make its way through to the competition. Keep in mind, every single thing that you have done up to this point for this assignment and again, I want to be very, very clear about that. You want to include in this particular submission, okay? And then you will have more time to work on this over the next several weeks. All right, everybody, hope you have a nice day. If you have any questions or concerns, do reach out to me.